So Squid Game is reportedly worth almost $900 million. So let's get right into the story. So Netflix's hit TV show Squid Game is reportedly worth almost $900 million in impact value and internal metric according to documents reviewed by Bloomberg. So the news comes days after the company said the South Korean series became its biggest series launch ever, topping 111 million viewers globally since its September 17th release. So Squid Game beat out Prodigion, which reached about 82 million households within its first 28 days on the platform, and Squid Game reportedly cost Netflix just 21.4 million dollars to produce which is actually surprisingly very close to the prize pool of Squid Game. So the nearly $900 million impact value does not reflect how much revenue the show generated. It is an internal metric used by Netflix to value a show that is based on a range of different benchmarks. Now, some of those metrics include how many viewers watched, who watched, and how long they watched. Bloomberg said the figures show 132 million people watched at least two minutes of the series during the 23 days after it launched. And Netflix reportedly estimates that 89% of people who started the show watched at least one episode. Now that's massive. So Squid Game is a gory dystopian series that follows fictional contestants as they compete in a series of children's games in the hopes of winning money and pay off mounting debt. Which, by the way, talking about debt, if you want to learn how to get out of debt, go to 40 So contestants are killed if they lose a game. Earlier this month, a South Korean internet provider sued Netflix after it claimed the popularity of the series led to a surge in network traffic. Netflix has bet big on international growth in recent years, investing in foreign language shows such as Money Heist. The company said earlier this year it plans to spend $500 million to develop content in South Korea, where paid subscribers topped $3.8 million at the end of last year. Now, other companies, including Disney, have also stepped up production efforts in Asia and abroad, where production costs are often cheaper than in the U.S. So it's pretty interesting, but here's the thing. Right, The thing to really understand about this, which, by the way, you should definitely watch the Squid Game. There's a lot of things that you can learn from that. And it was very well done, right? That being said, it goes to show you the importance or the potential exponential impact of something that is evergreen, right? And what I mean by this Anyone, at any time, in any location, as long as they have an internet access, can go and watch this show, right? So five years from now, they can go watch this show. Ten years from now, they can go watch this show. So sometimes it's important to basically put in like a hefty investment, the $21.4 million, to produce this sort of content so that... You could have basically compounding returns later on, right? It's basically like you are upfronting the cost of like an investment for it to pay off forever, right? This is kind of like the whole thing that you could kind of understand with like the TV show Friends, where that Friends show has generated billions of dollars of revenue over the lifetime of that show from all the deals that were made to share that content on different platforms, right? So that's something to really think about. And that's also something that you should really think about potentially focusing on, right? When in in terms of like investments or anything like that, focus on things that can keep on growing forever, right? So if you're wanting to invest money into the stock market, invest into something like the S&P 500, with an index fund, right, that you just have it reinvest its uh, dividends to keep on producing more and more money, right, called drip, right? So basically, you want the compounding nature of your investments to basically pay off for pretty much the rest of your life, right? And 
Look, a lot of people might say like, oh, you know, that's boring. Like, why focus on the future when you could just focus on living your life now, right? I don't care about getting into debt now. I don't care about spending all my money now. Well, the thing is, right, let's just take your car payment, for example. And we could literally use, like, you know, the examples of all these people in the show, right? Because every single one of these people in this show, in the game show, right, are in a lot of debt, right? Well, the amount of debt that they are in, that they got to pay interest on all the time, is compounding against them in the negative way, right? But if they were somewhat smart with their money, right? Where instead of getting into debt, taking out loans, dealing with loan sharks, gambling their money away, right? If they instead just simply put like, a few hundred dollars every single month into an index fund instead of like a car payment, guess what? Within a couple decades, they're going to become a millionaire, right? Like, that's how simple it actually is, but a lot of people simply just don't do it. It's not complicated. And the thing is, The more money you make and the more money you put into investments that have compounding interest, the quicker it is for that investment to actually get to the point of out earning your annual income, right? You could like, let's say, for example, like you're like a teacher or a police officer or someone who basically makes like, you know, like 40 to $60,000 a year, right? If you manage your money right, and invest your money right, you could actually easily get to the point of where your stock portfolio or your real estate portfolio ends up actually out-earning what you make from your job every single year, right? Same thing if you're like working a minimum wage job. You could get to the point where it actually makes more than what you are making every single year. And this is the importance of understanding finance, specifically personal finance, to the point of not getting into debt or paying off your debt as soon as possible so that you could go and invest your money to basically have an actual retirement, actually have a future to where you're not stressed out when you're like 70 years old, where you're having to do some crazy stuff to make some money, right? And this is another side thing, but one of the biggest reasons why people end up committing crimes is because of them needing money, right? The biggest reason people end up dealing with like loan sharks or potentially putting themselves in harm is because of money, right? So if you simply understand the simple concept of spending less than what you make and then putting some money towards investments, guess what? you are going to live a pretty safe and comfortable life for the rest of your life, regardless of your income, regardless of where you are located in the world. So just keep that in mind. You don't need to make this complicated. And again, if you haven't watched this show, you should, because it shows you really the dangers of mismanaging your money. Like, it's actually a pretty important thing to actually see for a lot of people because a lot of people know that they have debt, but they don't actually understand just how bad their situation actually is. And for all those people who end up stumbling upon this for having student loan debt and you don't really know the exact amount that you have, please go look at your student loan debt and write it down because the numbers are going to shock you and make you feel super disgusted with yourself. And if you want to learn how to get out of debt, go to 40inbox.com.